Strong electrolytes exist almost completely as ions in aqueous solution. Here's an example of a strong electrolyte. We would call this hydrochloric acid. Here's another strong electrolyte, potassium chloride. When we plop it into water, essentially all of the potassium ions end up floating around by themselves. All the chloride ions end up floating around by themselves. That's what we mean by a strong electrolyte. Often strong electrolyte dissociation or ionization equations are written with simply a one-sided arrow, which tells us that what we have in the solution is the stuff on the right. And what we don't have in the solution anymore is couples, like what's shown on the reactant side. Weak electrolytes produce only a small concentration of ions in reaching equilibrium. For example, this is acetic acid, and a very small fraction of acetic acid molecules actually end up generating ions, that is the acetate ion and hydrogen ion, but most of the acetic acid molecules, that would be what's on the reactant side, most of the acetic acid molecules stay intact and simply float around in the aqueous solution. Another example of a weak electrolyte is hydrofluoric acid, which is what we have right here. Hydrofluoric acid contains a very large percentage of HF couples floating around in solution, and a very small fraction of hydrogen ions and fluoride ions that have actually ionized. In a weak electrolyte solution, we have lots of neutral reactant and comparatively small amounts of charged products. When we write weak electrolyte equations, we often use a double arrow to denote that we have reached an equilibrium. In other words, at any given instant, let's take this hydrofluoric acid equation, at any given instant there are neutral HF molecules that are breaking up to yield hydrogen ions and fluoride ions, but at that same instant when equilibrium is happening, we have hydrogen ions and fluoride ions that are combining to form neutral HF molecules. So that the ratio of HFs to H pluses to F minuses is constantly maintained. Some of the strong electrolytes are the strong acids and strong bases. There are seven strong acids. Here they are. Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, chloric, perchloric, nitric, and sulfuric. I ask my students to memorize these. Sometimes I will refer to them as the seven dwarfs because there are seven of them. Note that three of them involve chlorine and the other four contain these elements in purple shown on this periodic table. Some strong bases are the hydroxides of what I've called the strong base cations. Now if you've followed these lessons from the beginning of this unit of study, you might already be familiar with the strong base cations. Here they are. These elements, when they form cations and combine with hydroxide ion, they are what I call the strong base cations, and there they are on the periodic table. Notice that that makes a lowercase b. If you have a good imagination, you can see a lowercase b there, which is the b in base, strong base cations. So any of these combined with OH minus ion is going to be a strong base and I will refer to the strong base cations from now on probably as the SBCs. Be careful to distinguish between dissolution and dissociation or ionization in regard to strongs or weaks. For example, CH3COOH dissolves completely but ionizes only slightly. It is therefore a weak electrolyte. On the other hand, Barium hydroxide 
dissolves relatively little. But the amount that does dissolve dissociates almost completely. Barium hydroxide is thus a strong electrolyte. So the question is, of the amount that dissolves, what fraction dissociates or ionizes? If the answer to that question is most, then that's a strong electrolyte. If the answer to that question is not much, then that's a weak electrolyte. Let's classify these substances as strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, or non-electrolytes. The first one, LiOH3, we see there a strong base cation paired up with hydroxide. That's a strong electrolyte, specifically a strong base. This next one, HClO3, my students should recognize that as the strong acid called chloric acid. That's a strong electrolyte. My students should recognize this next one as being the chemical formula for glucose, which is a sugar. It's actually the formula for, I think, two other sugars, but we've learned quite a bit about photosynthesis throughout our time in school, haven't we? And we should recognize that as glucose, the sugar made when plants perform photosynthesis, and any sugars or any alcohols we know to be non-electrolytes. This one is an acid, but it's not a strong acid. We learned a long, long time ago that if this one is chloric acid, if we take one oxygen away, we have chlorous acid. If we take two oxygens away, we have this one, which would be hypochlorous acid. That's a weak electrolyte. Let's try another example. If we have 0.4 moles of each of the following that are dissolved in 2.5 liters of water, rank them from least to greatest electrical conductivity. What I'm seeing here is methanol. That's an alcohol, which is a non-electrolyte. So that will be the least electrically conductive. I'm seeing here potassium nitrate. That will be a strong electrolyte. And here, calcium acetate will also be a strong electrolyte. Ah, but this one, this is called bromous acid. That is a weak electrolyte. So, methanol is a non-electrolyte. Bromous acid is a weak electrolyte. Now, what about these two? We'd look at those two and we'd say, yeah, they're both strong. But maybe the calcium acetate is a hair stronger because we produce three ions, one calcium ion and two acetate ions, that's a total of three, whereas potassium nitrate only forms two ions. So if you form three ions, probably more conductive, we would predict that it would be more conductive than a substance that only forms two ions. Final thoughts on strong versus weak electrolytes. One. Strong electrolytes dissociate or ionize 100%. Weak electrolytes dissociate or ionize to a small degree. Equations for strongs have a unidirectional arrow. Those for weaks have arrows in both directions. 2. Memorize the 7 strong acids and the 8 strong bases that contain the hydroxide ion, OH-. And 3. We distinguish between a strong and a weak electrolyte by looking at what is the principal species in the solution. If the principal species is in the ionized state, it is strong. If the principal species is a neutral substance, it's a weak electrolyte.